Moving over to the first discussion segment, the impact of the Chatham House on Nigerian politics or in Nigerian politics. You get to hear a particular supporter, a particular candidate bragging, has just been to Chatham House. People are asking now, what is the correlation between the Chatham House and our own politics? Hmm. With me here in the studio, I have a uh, a one-time chairman of Umode local government area, political analyst, uh, an agriculturist, a politician, join me to welcome uh, Honorable Napoleon Agbama. Welcome to TMI Sunday's edition. Good morning, Wesley. It's been a Good while. Morning, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Been a while. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, so very really close to me is uh, yeah, a very vibrant youth, one-time councillor in Ego Ward 7, and of course, a uh, one-time uh, uh, a director on ED, right, with uh, a former government of the state. Uh, and uh, he's a former politician and entrepreneur. Jeremy, to welcome Derek Humago. Derek, welcome to TMI's on this edition. Thank you I for appreciate having you coming. Good morning, viewers. All right, we're expecting orders. And of course, uh, our, our Zoom link, yeah, we, we, we were expecting to hook up or, or link up with um, uh, Nick. Alex, yes, Nick Alex, uh, 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 he is a, uh, a very vibrant youth. In fact, he was one time the youngest presidential candidate, and right now he's a deputy uh, uh, coordinator of the youths in the APC. If you can make contact with him, definitely via Zoom, you'll get to hear his own views and, of course, his own opinion about this particular uh, discussion. As I say, in broadcasting the show definitely will go on Chatham House impact on Nigerian politics. I want to start off with Honorable Napoleon Agbama. You get to hear your candidates, have they been to Chatham House? Might have been to Chatham House and I tell you that definitely we're going to come out tops in this election because Chatham House seems to be the cocoa, so to speak, right now in Nigerian politics. What's your view on that? Thank you very much, uh, Winston. I like the way you put it that uh, has what is the important of Chatham House to Nigeria politics? Yes, yes, it is important because uh, Nigeria as a developing country need to look upward to other developed countries if we want to be a developed country in all aspects of uh, governance. Uh, that is why it is important when you go out to an, a, a very exposed. Uh, place like a chartered house, you give out your manifestos. Let people digest and see if you are really capable of being the president of a country. Mm. You got that, to, that is why it is very important. Mm. Uh, to us here, yes, I know that uh, uh, election that has been playing here in Nigeria, very people, whatever that happened in chartered house doesn't consign them. They, do, they don't even use that to assess or even uh, uh, or even the radio system of voting. So in both sides, it is important for the elites, uh, for those who understand the importance of, uh, uh, of the game and uh, development that we are yearning for. For those, our local uh, voters and whatever, and I believe till now, it is uh, politicians and leaders that are still directing very many populists mm -hmm. on where to vote. Hmm. All right. Uh, I'll come back to you, Honorable. Well, well he, he, from what he said, he said, yes, it is important because you have to go to that place to tell the world your manifesto, how it's going to affect, you know, uh, Nigeria, especially Nigerians that seem to, like, you know, have this belief, this aura about the church and how do you share his views and opinion, Derek? Well, uh, no doubt, Ch Chatham. Chatham House. <laughs> Don't it's, bite a, down, please. it's a leading uh, institute for policy making and it is uh, a platform for debate and dialogue. No doubt. All over the world, it is renowned for its pundit status, you know, for reporting issues and for embracing dialogue, as I have said. But don't we have, you know, policy institutes in Nigeria? Don't we have platforms for di uh, uh, dialogue and uh, debate in Nigeria? 
Don't Nigeria have the platform, you know, to for politicians and prospective leaders to read their view on what their plans for the society that they seek to govern is. Aside from the show of shame that the various candidates have gone to display in the Chatham House, to the extent that one of the candidates have to delegate questions that were asked him. He has sourced questions. And those people that he has sourced his questions to, we are not pundits, we are not professionals, have not fared well in the various uh, sector that the questions that they have been directed to answer, you know, they've not fared well in those sectors. A particular governor who was asked about the situation, how they want to remedy the situa uh, co uh, security uh, challenges in the country. He was asked, and he was profiling, no doubt, he had, um, he, uh, to some extent, good answer. Because you, on this platform, I have answered that the uh, uh, solution to the security challenge we have in Nigeria is for us to decentralize the security system, you will recall, so that the federal, state, and local government will have their security architecture, no doubt. But how far, how well have this governor fared in the states? A state that has recorded one of the highest kidnapping uh, situation, a, a state that is bedeviled with banditry and what have you. This is the same governor who has come to profile solution, whereas he has not practiced what he's preaching. So in all, I think Nigerians and the Nigerian leaders are more like to be ashamed for their leaders going to shatter us to say what they want to do for the locals, the Nigerians, who are here, whereas they have not yet reached out to the people, the Nigerians, that they want to govern. All right, all right. So you just hold on now. I, I will come to you, Honorable, but I want to go for a break. We'll return. We'll continue with this show. I want to bring in uh, uh, Samuel Ehigato uh, to really balance up this discussion because it's like we are diving towards that where everyone will speak on behalf of who they uh, represent. It don't go away. It's getting more and more interesting. Uh, Honorable said, look, it is important for them to go to that place to uh, tell us what they have in store for the country. Why uh, 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 Derek, Derek is saying uh, is like, you know, a, a show of shame. Why not focus more on the media houses in your country? What do you view, what's your view on that particular assertion? Two separate views from two separate persons. Don't go away. We'll be right back. TMI. Every opinion counts. And they're joining us right now is uh, Samuel Ehigato, yeah, a political analyst, a politician, a youth mobilizer. And of course, uh, when you talk about uh, some issues, where well, we want to really digress over so last say positively into talking about politics in Nigeria. He is uh, the right man to meet. Samuel, welcome to TMI's on this edition. I really appreciate your uh, coming. Uh, because I, I know that you're a member of the APC and I know that you, you really want to come say one or two things about what happened at the Chatham House. That's why I gave you that invite. And of course, uh, uh, you've, you've heard uh, what uh, Derek said and what Honorable said. It's like they have to separate opinion about the Nigerian candidate, especially presidential candidate going to Chatham House to tell the world they have in store for Nigeria. What do you feel about that? Wilson, thank you. Good morning. And uh, good morning, viewers. Well, Wilson, thank you very much. The, the issue with the chat in the house is, is that Nigerians will like painting things very wrong when something is new to us. Charter House is well recognized that most great leaders have visited, most great leaders have been there to express what they have for the world and for their countries. So I think uh, the APC candidate, Asiwa Jubala Metunobu, was not the first president or any president. I remember that of the German was also there, the US president was also there before he was elected. So there are many big Greek leaders that usually go to the charter house to express themselves because they, they believe the, the, the chatting with professionals, people with experience, people that could judge what they are going to do is going to be right or wrong, you know, not from just from the mouth to, to criticize. So 
But what people keep saying now, he delegated questions to these people. Sorry, sir. We all know Bola Ahmed Tunubu has always been a team player. He has always been somebody that whatever he do, he carry people along. Good. The final decisions is left for him to make in the governors. But he, he wants to prove to the people, I have the team. I have the people that could handle this issue, this government, in a different way. And if you look at the questions that came, he delegated to those people, and the answer those people were given are things that is embedded in his manifest. They were not outside his manifesto. You understand me? So I don't see whether he's going to bring it out from his manifesto to answer the people, or he dedicated people to answer, because they are all vast with the manifest. It is what I love. I love to see them understanding themselves. And they put in the question to them, and they try, even though they were not that professional, in that various feed, as people may assume, but I believe they gave a good outing. And go on in, uh, questioning. Bola Ahmed Tunubu did over one hour personal interview with the BBC without delegating questions to people. He was on one on one with them, all six. And he gave the best he can. And he spoke to them. He made them understand why Nigeria need him as a, as a president. Mm. And anyway, why the changes must come. Uh, anyway, you were, so, you, you were going to delve into name mentioned it, though you were a member of the political party. You studied all this. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It, it's okay. No, I'm I'm just just saying, you know, it's okay. Who was in the Charter House recently? Okay. He was the one in the Charter House. All right. It is also open if the PDP candidate wants to go to the Charter House to defend himself to his manifesto. Mm. If it's the other party too, that does not even have a manifesto, wants to go there too to defend themselves, they can also go to the Charter House. It is an open place. It is not made for a particular candidate. Okay. Uh, you understand me? Let okay. us not misunderstand that. All right. Over to you, Honorable. You, you, you heard him. Thank you very much. Yes. Much I, I agree with uh, my colleagues. There is a place that we have already uh, identified before it's come that where one can go there to expose to the world your plan over your country if eventually you win as a president. Yeah. But my friend faced to realize that that is a place where the whole world is watching a candidate that will be presented in a particular country. And if you saw any candidate is going there, the candidate should be prepared himself or herself so that it will not be a laughing stock uh, from, from other countries or friendly uh, countries that will be watching such an event. I agree that, yes, it's a teamwork. Governance is not uh, just a, a, a president alone or government alone, a governor alone or whatever. Uh, you must have a teamwork. But there is a place you can uh, use that teamwork. It's not a place like Chattard has where you are being invited as a presidential candidate to say you are delegating uh, a, a question that is directed to you. And even if you want to do so, you will first of all open that question by answering it. Mm -hmm. Then before that, say yes to portray it. I want uh, so, uh, Peter or James to uh, to, to put more light on it yeah. because it's a teamwork. Mm -hmm. Not just a direct question to you; you are directing it to other people. So, uh, what will outside people look at? That is why. I, so, that is where I didn't just. So, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. That is where I didn't just agree uh, fully with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Like I said, uh, that is a thing. Well, government, is a, government is a, it's a thing. Well, it's not uh, something that one person will just uh, mm -hmm. uh, do. But if you are going there, you must prepare yourself to answer every other question that will be put to you in that particular aspect. Okay, o over not to you, uh, Derek. <coughs> you, you, you heard um, Samuel, he said, look, this to show that that particular candidate is a team player. But what Honorable said, he said, even if it's a team, we should have a bite at the question first before you now say, okay, fine, you throw more light on it. Take it off from there. Well, do, before I answer that question, let me correct an impression. Mm. I don't know if it was the Labour Party candidate that uh, my colleague here said does not have a manifesto. He never mentioned anybody. I said, I never mentioned anybody. In case you are in doubt, Derek, the manifesto <laughs> is everywhere, more than 60 page <laughs> documents, you know, analyzing <laughs> how Nigeria will be removed from the consumption economy <laughs> to a production economy. Okay. Having said that, mm -hmm. you see, when I said that I'm against 
the Chatham House visitation. I did not restrict it to any particular person, yes. person or aspirant. I am against it because it is not of us. Our politics is local, whether you agree or not. The people that you seek to govern are Nigerians. 98% of these people don't know what Chathamas is. <laughs> they don't. Until recently, I didn't okay. care about Chathamas. I could just hear passively, but I didn't take time to know about them until just recently. So if I suppose as I am, I was not very aware of how Chatham House operates. Then what do you say about the layman down there in the street? Mm -hmm. We have a presidential candidate who have never been to any debates anywhere in Nigeria. Even when the same Chatham House went one uh, Priscilla asked him that why have you been showing debates in your country? He simply told her that the media houses in Nigeria are trying to cash out on him. They want to make money through him because he's popular. That is another arrogant and very way. rude way, you know, to address people of your, of your country. What is wrong if you have put up yourself to lead a country, to lead the people, and you think you are not answerable to them because you are more than them, you are above them? That is one issue, another area people need to look into very critically. Yeah. Nigeria today, or the black, the black race, are uh, the problem of they have become a, a problem to themselves in the to, in this uh, uh, due to the fact that they are not the people who are offering themselves to the colonial masters for recolonization. This uh, individual, that professor, I forgot his name, in South Africa, wrote a book of neo-colonialism. Our Europe and America seek to recolonize the, uh, Africa all over again. And our leaders have a hand in it. You will just leave your own country. You go to uh, 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 London to be debating how you want to rule Nigeria. Why can't the Englishman come to Nigeria to debate how they want to rule us? Because the mineral wealth that is making them wealthy, that is enriching their economy, is from here in Africa. They have systematically manipulated the entire global economic scale so that everything rests in their table. To the extent, we just recently, the president of Ghana have revolted and said, hey, we produce cocoa. If you want chocolate, come and set up chocolate factories in Ghana. Whereas less than 6% of the entire value chain goes to Africa, we have uh, 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 over 80% of cocoa is produced. So Nigeria and Africa need to go back to their drawing board and embrace their own ideology, their own culture, their own homogeneity, their own everything about us. We should st start to package it and show it to the world through oh, that nice. concept that they call soft power. Remember, remember the Chinese, the Arabians, and all the countries that are doing well today. They have their own way of dressing, their own ideology. They have everything about them is original. All right, you cannot you. copy someone and become more perfect than that person. That person will always outsmart you. Thank you so, so much, Jerry. But come on, Jerry, calm down. <laughs> calm down. Calm down. Over to you now, Sammy. said, look. Thank you very much. He's giving a very strong reason why we should, like, you know, forget about Chatham House. I can to him, 68% of us here in Nigeria don't even know what Chatham House is. Over to you. I can understand his emotion, mm. and I can understand his point very well. But first, I would like to put a, a two more light a little bit to what my leader said, my mm. honorable said. Chatham House. I don't believe I see is the first candidate that have gone there. Many great leaders. Go on, go on, go on Google it. Go and check the leaders that have gone there. Even from African countries, uh, North African countries, from the Asia countries, even the American president, as at last election, Donald Trump, went as far as to Chatham. And when he was in Chatham, he took teams along with him. Was that, why did nobody criticize him? He took a team along with him. Yeah, when he was questioned, he took teams, teams along with him. Did, now, did, he, did he tell those teams to answer his question? Wait a second, can you listen? Or you, do I Google it out? Go ahead. I, I, I went through that interview Go ahead. yesterday night before I came here. Go ahead. The, Donald Trump did not answer most of those questions. He answered one or two of the two questions. When they bring the other question, he sent it to, uh, to, 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 the, uh, to, to somebody, uh, to a lady. When they asked the other question, he sent it to the other man. He was delegating the question to the team that came with him. I watched the video. Go and watch it with him. Right. Don't be arguing blindly. Mm. Let us be sincere. There was nobody that came up to say what Donald Trump was doing was wrong. Why should he dedicate people? Should have answered it by himself. 
why must it be everything we Nigerians do is the wrong one, is the wrong way? When the European does it, it is the right way. When we African does it, it is the wrong way. Why on the other aspect, uh, that is on the aspect of my honorable boy, he said that his dedicated question was his problem. I don't believe it's a problem. I believe that is what he believed it should do. Hmm. On that aspect. Why on my brother said, why should he go to Chata and tell the world why he wants to rule, like, what he wants to do with Ban Nigerian? Hmm. Sorry, brother. Contesting for the Nigerian presidency, it is not just all about Nigeria. It is about the world. Mm. Because Nigeria is a powerhouse mm. in Africa. Yeah. And you cannot just do Nigerian politics mm. without the international bodies. bodies. Okay. If not, I will ask you why is Atiku banners in London uh, uh, train stations? Why is Obi banner in London train stations? Why is Asuwaju banner in London station in American train stations? Because Nigeria is not just a country. You play international, uh, local politics. Mm. Whatever happens, whoever becomes the president, it is very important for the world as well. Mm. So it is good for the world to know this person coming to rule this giant of Africa, coming to rule this great nation, what does he have for his people as well? Mm. As what you have brought to has attended over 20 or 30 town hall meetings with different stakeholders, engineers, laborers. A uh, 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 committee ahead. I think the royal fathers. What does those town halls mean? It's interaction. Must it be that I come on a, an, a, a debate section or an interview is when I can express myself? No. He did not even deny that he's not coming. He's not a man that is shy of media. We have seen it severally. He's not shy of media. He stood on his ground. Somebody can be able to answer questions for BBC. Is okay. it a rice television or is it uh, the, the TVC that television cannot answer questions for? Oh, I, or is it uh, the question they are going to ask in a rice are going to be different from BBC? Mm. That BBC went even as far to question they cannot even ask in Nigeria about his certificate, about his life. About the, in Nigeria, we won't even ask him those questions. We will be, he will be rejected because we don't want to offend him too because we need his favor one way or the other. I swear. I'll come back so, again, Samuel. We should not always criticize everything we do. Okay. Nigerians, he said, Nigerians don't know about Chatham House. At least most he said 68%. He said 98, over 98 percent don't know about Chatham House. I don't believe that's a correct All statistic. Right. Okay. Because we have majority over 30 or 40 percent that are in Europe now as that knows about what is Chatham. Okay. We have those that are in Nigeria as well that knows about Chatham House. It is not just a, a, a house. Okay, it is an international house for viewers and great leaders. Hold on, hold on. Viewers out there, uh, you get to see the phone line right now on your screen. You can call in to make a contribution. Yes, those who start scrolling the phone line, if you have what to say about this particular discussion, I'm sorry they inform you on time, but uh, because of the magnitude of this discussion, because of the heat of this discussion, I really want you to be part of it. So in due course, the PD will indicate that the phone lines on uh, on the screen you call into the phone lines i'll get to hear your views and of course your opinion yeah that is a phone number right there on your screen if you have anything to say about this particular topic you can call in and let us share your own views and your opinion on the impact of this chatham house in nigerian politics honorable over to you 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 heard him he said look as to what you bola he gave me permission to use the name he was not started it uh, I want to put it now, was able to answer good questions from BBC. Um, Donald Trump did what he did. So why is it that Nigeria is keep this thing as safe is one new thing? Take it up from there. Thank you very much, Winston. Mm. I don't want to look, uh, lo le let us look at this uh, debate. Yes. You're just direct properly to one particular individual. Yeah. Yes. From the beginning, you said the important. The important. Yes. That's how. Mm to Nigeria election, election. And Nigeria as a country. Yes. I think we look at it in that uh, perspective. Mm. Uh, whoever that goes there, like I said earlier, do it so that it will not be of a laughing stock to you and to your party. Yeah. If you are representing your party, not even the presidential candidate, any other person representing your uh, party, yes, we're well, fine. You can go there, analyze your all uh, manifesto. manifesto. Mm. Because the manifesto of every party is already there. Yeah. I can represent my own party and say, yeah, this is what my party will do when mm -hmm. eventually we win. Mm -hmm. In aspect of security, the agriculture, whatever, education, health. But you should do it the way that people will say, yes, 
this is a right and a very important person that mm -hmm. can handle such a country. All right, uh, 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 all right you, you, you just wrote that we have a, a, a caller. Hello? Hello, good morning. Yeah, uh, good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Anthony. I'm calling from Mahatma Honora. Okay. All right, Anthony, what do you feel about this discussion? Yeah, let me tell you, this charter house uh, issue was broken by APC administration in 2016 when they were campaigning for President Muhammad Buhari. Mm. There is no other president in Nigeria that has ever visited charter house. So this issue of charter house is overflowed because we don't need charter house. Okay. The president in Nigeria have never visited Qatar to address Nigeria or how they, or how they are going to govern us. Hmm. The issue is that uh, the Qatar house, the Qatar house matter is is peculiar to to the thirty people in Nigeria who have who believe that Qatar house is their home to govern Nigeria. Hmm. So that is so that is so, so that is my take in this issue of Qatar house. All right, thank so you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Though, yeah. though, though it's your comment and of course opinion, you may not be totally correct. Because some president visited the Chatham House. Maybe it's not as popular as it used to be. Just for it to be guarded, uh, at least I can tell you that, okay? But from your own knowledge, nobody is debasing you know. All that president, apart from Buhari, have been there in the Chatham yeah. House. But I like your visa, your opinion. Yeah. You said it shouldn't be, you know, a, a sort of discourse, okay? Hello. Hello, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Welcome to TNI Sunday's edition. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, this is Mohammed. All right, Mohammed, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, are we talking about Shatter House by this time? You let is us know. House, is it the problem of Nigeria now? Hmm. So, if, as what to Tunubu, Tunubu is a man of the world. Hmm. I stay in Lagos where Tunubu was a governor. Tunubu makes his Lagos to be better today. So the rest, certainly the V and the Tiku, what are they doing for this Nigeria before? We don't know the story of Atiku. Uh, all right, hold on. Now, this is not uh, a, 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 a platform to debate any candidate, please be guarded. That is how we run, follow this, our governor today. But today, the adults are regretting. Like getting some human beings. All right, all right. <coughs> now, now, you are getting emotional and personal. I was the one that caught you off. <laughs> For good reasons, please, if you're calling in the garden, okay, we have rules and regulations governing the airwaves. Let's be guarded, okay? Two more calls. I go out to my discussion because they are saying something very, very important. Please, gentlemen, be guarded, okay? Hello. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling Obaza Akube, calling from Lagos. All right, comrade uh, Obaza Akube, calling from where? Lagos? Ego. Okay, Ego. Go ahead. Yeah, what I want to contribute to this issue is that at times in Nigeria we, we tend to deliberate on what is not necessary. Mm. Tunubu going to Chatham House does not, it does not, it's not supposed to call for a rancor. It's just like other TV stations. If he feels he's not comfortable with the way some channels or some TV stations in Nigeria are handling their, their, their guests, on their shows, they, they, they are shown partisan in their in their questions and everything. So Tinubu mm. going to hear he feels what we hear in him is a plus. And going there with his team, he has shown to us how his leadership will be, that his leadership will be a participation. And in order to get that vision, we need a very good team that are made up of different experts mm. to be able to bring their expertise together in achieving that vision. That is what Tunubu has shown to us. And I believe in him, and I believe he is the best for this country. I will not give him a precedent. Nobody has a precedent like Tunubu thus far in all the presidential candidates. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know to campaign for anybody. Just give us your views and, of course, your opinion about the impact of Chatham House in Nigerian politics. One more call because my guests, they have so much to say. Hello. 
Hello. Yeah, good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? This is uh, Moody from Maduawa. All right, Moody, go ahead. Okay. You see, the problem of Nigeria is that when we see the truth, we don't want to talk the truth. Mm. That is the problem we are facing in this country. A man that wants to govern almost 230 million people, most of it have been run from Nigeria and went to our side country and future. People are, people are supporting him that he is the right person. You are the living, you are the people living in the country. Why are you afraid of uh, going to uh, 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 the media? If you don't have another partner, if it is PDP to all that partner, we say, oh, because of that, you don't want to move to all that So now you are the one ruling. Why are you running from interview? Why are you running for debate? Is it not that go to vote for you or other uh, uh, country? I beg we should talk the uh, truth. The man is not capable. Oh, uh, 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 all right. Hold on. We are willing to debate any candidate. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you we heard them. Please well put a stop to the call because. The phone line is still ringing. Maybe we really want to continue, but just hold on. Let's get to hear some more from our analyst in the studio. It's still ringing, but you just have to hold on. Some are for, some are not for. That is on Nigerian police. Is so, honourable. We are, we are still with you before we took that call. Cool. So go ahead, continue with what you are saying. Thank you very much. Mm. I'll, uh, I'll give you contributors from my side. Yeah. I, I want to disagree with my colleagues here that uh, it's so important. It's important. It's part of the development we are yearning for. Nigeria is moving forward. We are trying to imitate the developed countries in non aspect of uh, governance. Mm. The social media that we all done today are used to, we are not there in the two, three previous election past. But today, social media is one of the, the, the major uh, way of campaigning by aspirants and uh, whatever, even uh, for uh, producers to, 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 to popularize their product or whatever to the masses. So the social media were not there before. So we are growing. Before, like he said, if, uh, like one of the, uh, the callers said, that none of the, uh, most of the presidential candidates before we are not going there. Yes. As at that time, probably we are not uh, right to this uh, stage. Mm -hmm. And we are not to the stage now. We are Nigerians abroad. Both Nigerians at home, like he said, who may not be privileged to even sit down and watch television or whatever. They can, from their own social media handset or whatever, listen to what is happening all over the world. And that is why that place is more important. It's important that you expose what you are going to do hmm. in your own country if eventually you win as a president. And like I said, there is no, the, uh, if, if we want to even delegate, but you must be the person to introduce or to first of us answer that question before you now delegate somebody to say, hey, add to it. Mm. That is my own personal uh, opinion. Or, uh, opinion. Mm. It is very important. Uh, my brother have said that uh, uh, most of uh, people here are told they do not. Yes, I've said so earlier that today, the rural areas, most of our people, who are not my market women, who doesn't even have time to even listen to whatever. I said, election is being directed in those areas mm. by uh, political leaders or leaders of their various communities and uh, associations. And that is what is playing. And that is why today one cannot just rely on social media campaign. Mm. That if you say social media, because there are so many who doesn't believe on social media campaigns. Yes, yes. And uh, most of those uh, social media uh, talks, not all, are correct. Okay. Well, you we have all about the phone is still ringing, but just hold on now. Let's let's really focus on the analysis. You've done your own part. Just hold on, Derek. You heard the callers. Some are for, some are not for. All right. Some are saying what is Chatham House. Some are saying yes, it's very very important. But a particular supporter of a particular candidate said, "Look, Wilson, my candidate he has been to Chatham House, and that is final." He's going to be the president of this country. I looked at him and I kept quiet in my mind. Is this how powerful the Chatham House is? Is that the final bus stop for anyone that wants to know no, his don't. candidate to become president? No, Take it up on that, Derek. I well, before I, before I respond to that, yes. let me respond to what uh, my colleague got me. Hope you're not taking this personal. <laughs> He's taking it personal. No, 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 Check this out. Check this out. Derek, please. We'll see. Check this out. Okay, okay. corrections. Okay, okay, hold on. Myself okay, hold on, hold on. and uh, Honorable, yeah, yes. do you want to dwell on people or personal or individuals? Yes. yes. It is my brother here that kept mentioning his preferred presidential candidate, it's trying to elevate him okay. above all that. But in doing so, he said that uh, if Tinubu could go to Shatter House, mm. 
to uh, uh, receive interview, answer, respond to questions from the charter house. What is TVC? What is channels that I cannot answer a question from? And I'm like, really? This is BBC. part of the problem. Okay, BBC, yeah. This is part of the problem that we have in Nigeria. The elites and the, the Euro Europeans, who I see as the new colonialists, have used the concepts I call soft power to influence us to the extent that we now see things abroad as superior to the things as here as well in Nigeria. If, if, if a country that needs to develop, a country that needs to thrive, must own its own concept, its own idea, its own ideology and culture. Until you do that, you are heading for failure. Today, the Chinese people, almost everything about them is original. If you go to their judicial system, the address code is unique to them. Well, in Nigeria here, the, our judiciary uh, officials dress like the British judiciary officials. See, there is a way this thing affects us psychologically to the extent that we keep depending on the white man who have put us in this you know, situation that we are in today. I will say that when one of the respondents said that, I'm going to look at Tinubu's antecedent, I'm like, which antecedent are we talking about? It is said that to whom much is given, much is expected. Remember when Tinubu met Lagos? Lagos had flowing pipe on water. That means their water board was functioning. You could open your tap at home and collect water to drink and do other things. Today, Lagos have almost zero pipe on water. In the entire Lagos, none is functional. Instead, people are now resorting to sinking borrow in their compound. And the government of the day has moved ahead to collect taxes on those borrow. Now, before Tinubu became governor of Lagos State, Lagos State had one of Derek, the best teaching of Derek, people Derek, in the world. Derek, it is no, not listen, a listen. Listen. No, Derek, no, 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 Okay, okay, check this out. Derek, check this out. Derek, Derek, hold on. Derek, hold on. Let's check this out. This is not a platform to campaign on the Derek, you have my colleagues to stop campaigning. I'm not campaigning. This is not campaigning. My brother, I'm not campaigning. If he uses it, they are not campaigning. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Let me round up my points. Hold on, gentlemen, right now. Opinions and campaigns are different. Um, Summer, please, right now, the personal let's I mean, not that. mention names for good reason. Before the policy in this place get to a level that I'll just be forced to shut down the show. I wouldn't want to do that. So please, gentlemen, let's not be personal. We have other guests also that really want to share their thoughts and opinions. It will get to their turn. Right, for almost 45 minutes, talking about this for the past 45 minutes, I was still on this. I asked one question. You've not answered the question. Please go to that question. Someone said once you are dead, the Chatham House is a one-way ticket to the presidency. We can take it up if they cannot. It is. <laughs> it okay, is. No, like on, I have continue, continually said, yes. I say it is a show of shame oh, for right. prospective or future leaders or people who want to lead Nigeria mm. to go abroad to okay. showcase their manifesto or whatever way they want to lead Nigeria. Okay. It is a show of shame. Politics is local. You must come home okay. and address the people you want to lead Convince them on how you want to lead them. Yeah. If they are convinced, they will vote for you. Rather than you going to a white man's country to tell them your manifesto. Right. Those are not the people you seek to lead. All right. Thank you so, so much. <coughs> General, please, let's, let's bring it down a little bit, please. I don't want this place to be heated up. It's not about being personal. It's not about mentioning the name of candidates. Samuel, you started mentioning of names. I know yeah. that. Listen. So please be guarded. Yeah. So Wait back it. to that question. Listen. I want to tell you one thing. Yes. Going to Chatterham. It's not the final buster. It's not the deciding point who will win the election. I don't believe. But I believe it is an opportunity for a candidate to also express to the whole world, because Chatham is like representing almost the whole world, because they said the highest intellectuals, the world best intellectuals are there. The professionals are there. So it is an opportunity for Nigerians to also tell the world, candidate, to tell the world, this is how I want to govern this country. This is how I want to bring this country from this position to the next position that could also favor the world, not us, we Nigeria alone, but the whole world at, at large. And then when you come to the situation of this man has not given, is not giving, uh, is not uh, uh, dealing locally with interviews, what is town hall meeting? 
This was a simple question. What are town halls meeting? This man has been taking different town hall meetings day and night from one state to the other, meeting the locals. And now I have decided, I have done a while with some experts of some people. Let me also make the international body understand that this man coming has also everyone at mind. I see nothing wrong about it. I see nothing wrong about it. Let us not always criticize what is new to us. Even though that charter is not even new to Nigerian politics. Right. But we have this habit. Whatever that comes new, whatever that is, is not common with us, we like to criticize. Okay. Honorable. But I think it's not the right way. Wait. Let's encourage. Nigerian is for Nigerian, yes. Okay. Nigerian is also for the world. Okay. And we have majority of Nigerians in diaspora that also have the serious interest mm. in mind to know who is to rule their own country, even though they are not here. All right, now, but and those but, opportunities but, but are, saying, and to give those opportunities to them. automatic ticket to the presidency of no, Nigeria. No, no. Okay. But it's an opportunity. To express yourself. Yes. Okay. To okay. both home and abroad. abroad. Honorable, over to you right now. From what he said, it isn't a one-way ticket i agree with both of them mm -hmm. it's not a it's not a place that you do attend i think you have won as a president mm -hmm. because more than 80 nigerian population that is going to do the voting are not interested in uh, whatever you talk in chatter house mm -hmm. before they now vote that is very very clear but like he said nigeria as i have been saying is a developing country we are moving forward a time will come when our sons and daughters in diaspora will have to vote, like America do, British and all of that, the countries. So that these people from there, in their assessment, they are be their developed countries. They know those who can do things that will turn around in the country to make Nigeria a better place where all other people will now come in. Like my brother has been talking about, that we want to instill ourselves to the, another colonial system of... Uh, uh, rule again. Yes, this is because the attitude and the past government in the country. Look at the bread rate from the country today. Many of our doctors are no longer here, good doctors, engineers, they are not here. Even to uh, 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 the nurses, they have, they have, all, they have, all, they have yes. all moved away. Mm -hmm. This is because the system here is no longer favorable for them to practice. If we can bring in somebody that have those expatriates to make sure that things are okay here, and I believe one would like to work in his own country than going to foreign countries. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we will get there. And in order to get there, we must look at the developed countries, look at the system of their governance in all this area of uh, governance to make sure that we emulate and copy and even surpass them so that our country will be okay. And that is why it is important. It is not because of the vote itself. That you, when you go to charter house, therefore you have a win an election. No, to expose yourself, probably there, like he said, there are so many economists, there are so many businessmen, there are so many uh, professionals. Uh, professionals that you can meet there with the team you, you, you move in there. After the, the, the presentation or whatever, they can interact and have amendment to whatever. Uh, uh, program they have oh, in right. the country. And that is why it is important. important. It is not for election. Right. If it is for election, there is no need of going to Jagger. All right, I, I just can't resist picking yeah. this call. The phone has been buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. Hello, who is on the line? Two more calls. We'll call it up on this segment. Hello. Hello, good morning. Harry Man online from Ubo. Okay, Harry Manuel from Ubo. Go ahead. What do you feel about this discussion? Okay, Harry Mann from Ugboa. Go ahead, Harry Mann. Thank you. This is the issue of uh, Chapter House. I think mm. I have to come in. Mm. Now, if the candidate is preparing for election, like we all know, we are in a developing country, not in a developed country. And like, uh, we just come to discover there's nothing wrong in going to Chapter House, for instance. But as a candidate who is preparing for election, your main concern is to think of how to make the people understand, I mean your local people, reasons why they should vote for you. Now, if you end up convincing these people of reasons why they should vote for you, you have a hand. I believe if you want to go to the chapter, for instance, 
it is the people that are working with you that won't give you reasons why you should go to chapter house. Mm -hmm. And if you are going, like uh, somebody rightly said, you are going to be prepared. They, they are going to prepare you. The situation whereby somebody goes to chapter house, for instance, and they are asking you questions. You are now referring to those people that are preparing to vote for you, the people, the same people that you are going to fall back on. You are now using bad words on them, like you, you, you are answering as if you are not answerable to them. Remembering or having it at the back of your mind, it is these same people that you are talking to that vote for you. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Tinubu has paid Nigeria. Uh, hold on now. The, the this, this is where I caught you off. I've already quelled that issue here with my panelists. I'm bringing it up again. I said, don't mention it of them for good reasons. You, you, it's not a plan for you to debase any candidate or appraise any candidate. Just speak your mind, okay? Please, let's be guarded. Hello. One more call, and that's it. Good morning. Welcome to TMI. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Comrade Dura. I say from Benin. All right, Comrade Dura. I say, go ahead. Thank you very much. So much I love this uh, program. All right. It is good to say the fact. If uh, the APC candidate, uh, Tinubu Ahmed, go to uh, the British or the uh, Shatter House, if, if, if it's possible for him, he can even go with the, all the APC never last time. So what I'm trying to say to Shatter House to expose himself, to say whatever I want to say, he, he do the right thing. <laughs> Because if you can see it now, we are under the British. The British is the order, not colonize us. British cannot come here to expose uh, whatever they want to do. They are on top of us. For to go there to, to explain or uh, send the, que uh, the, uh, the question to the uh, executor following, it is not do wrong because it's not the only one that will take care of this country. All right. So, so people go there to be the cause. They don't go there as a messenger. But the way he do it now, he, he's telling the whole world that he wants to go to that uh, position as a messenger. He's not going there as a boss. Thank you. The truth, is, the truth is bitter. Thank you. Thank you. That's the last call. Now, this was I, 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 I wanted to open up the phone lines in the first place. Get to see emotions. <laughs> some for, some not for. They are just there doing their own thing. But this is also a test also to millions of persons watching today's edition of uh, TMI. Gentlemen, you have one minute each to summarize your point. Even of Charter and House. All right. This is not a personal issue. Sam, you started this. <laughs> you started it. Because I was so not please, here at the earlier stage. I understand. I understand. So, so please, one. Derek, calm down. Be, you know, calm. What advice do you have for those that are saying that, yes, he has been there. He's going to be our president. Take it up from there. One minute is summarize your point. You're asking me to, be, to answer a <laughs> question based on a personality. <laughs> and I hope you accept the answer I gave. I just said on the implication of the impact of that Chatham House in Nigerian politics. One minute summarize your point, please. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. I don't care if my view is unpopular. No, your, your views check, are popular already with some persons. Check, check this out. It's a balanced if, discussion here. If anybody who seeks to govern Nigeria and lead Nigeria out of the woods now decide to go back to the colonial master, <laughs> whose interest is primarily about themselves, how to feather their own nest. And our own potential leader is going back, going to them to tell them the policies that he seeks to use to better Nigeria. I think that's all the pathway to success, to oh, Eldorado. Rather, we should focus on our locals, we should focus on our institutes. We have different institutes with good pundits. Right. We should focus here, talk to our people using the platforms that are local, local to address issues that we want to address. Thank you so, so much, Derek. I appreciate your wonderful uh, analysis, but please, Derek, calm down. I know he, he, he pinched you, I know, but just calm down. He just started by saying the party don't have manifesto. That's where everything starts. In. Samuel, please. <laughs> Over now to you. One minute, please, Samuel. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Well, for me, uh, a particular candidate or any leader willingly to be a leader of any country going to Chatterham has a good record. It is why it's called the home of great leaders. 
That is where most great leaders are built. Those are where great leaders do visit to, before elections and after elections. I just, so I don't see it like a recolonization. I believe it was an opportunity for this particular candidate to sell his product, to sell his manifesto to Nigerians in the diaspora, first and foremost, because we have majority of them that wants to know what we want to do for them, that will encourage them to come back or not to come back. There's a lot of yearning, because if you look at the social media campaign going on recently, it is the, those are brothers that are really pushing it, because they want to know what is the next step for Nigeria. So a candidate going there to express it to the Nigerians in diaspora and to the Europeans that this is what I have for my country, is nothing wrong about it. Right. Thank you so and much I don't see anything people should be criticizing about. about Delegating the questions to people, it is a sign of a team man. Okay. Why, on the other hand, people are complaining that here would have been the best place to express it, I will tell you, listen, we watch the candidate that they are complaining of in different town hall meetings. I've said it more than 20 times today here. He, he attended different time meetings. Thank you, Samuel. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank uh, you. Interviews thank on you. one on one. Is off. Thank you. To express himself. So thank what's so wrong much. about it? Thank you so much. You are much. doing it already on locally. Then over to you, please. Thank you very one much. Thank all you very right. much. All right. Viewers. I believe this is the right time now. All the vote, uh, viewers <laughs> and uh, credible uh, people that will want to vote in the uh, coming election, go and collect your PVC. Mm -hmm. Chartered House will not make one to be the president of this country. It is those who are ready to tackle the insecurity we have today in the country, to tackle the problem of uh, oil theft, that a natural resources that God has abandoned us to develop, that we are not developing, to develop our health sectors, develop our education, and our road and infrastructures. And that capable person that everyone knows that will be able to do it, you that your PVC to do it okay. and not charter, uh, charter has a visitation or whatever. All right. Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you so, so much. You see, in a way, they agreed in so, with so many points. They have the same view. Why they were diverted also in so many views. Well, you've heard them, the opinion, yeah, it has nothing to do with ITV, but they did their best despite the emotional uh, turmoil. I just you know, was sitting in the studio, they are, they are all friends, okay? Sometimes politics bring out some kind of, hey, leave my candidate alone, you know, why are you bringing me into this matter? Yes, Chatham House is not a one-way ticket to the presidency. It depends on you looking at us. Yes, go get your PVC, you heard Honorable uh, Napoleon Obama. Go get your PVC, you are the determining factor, you're the determinant in this election. Go get it, and of course, go over the candidate of your choice. Gentlemen, thank you so, so much, because for almost one hour, we'll be talking about this particular issue. Derek, thank you. Thank Samuel, you. thank you so much. I appreciate much. you. Thank you very much. Let's get to hear from all the uh, analysts on the views of this particular topic. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs>